Greetings, folks. Uh, the Comics Kid 2099 here to examine X Men issue 117. Uh, this issue is scripted by Chris Claremont, uh, co plotted with John Byrne, who is also doing the penciling, uh, inked by Terry Austin, lettered by Clem Robbins, uh, colored by Glennis Ween, uh, edited by Roger Stern, with Jim Shooter as the editor in chief. Uh, this issue opens with the X-Men uh, in the middle of the ocean. Uh, it is a raging storm, uh, and uh, Wolverine asks what I'm assuming everybody is wondering. Why doesn't Aurora storm? Uh, why doesn't she just make the storm go away? And the answer is she's trying, but her powers have their limits. Uh, now, later on, uh, in later years, I feel like Storm uh, kind of is given more of a power boost where uh, if she was dropped in the middle of a raging storm like this, that she would be able to calm it more easily uh, so uh, I feel like maybe uh, this is a situation where uh, Claremont and Byrne were just like eh uh, we don't want her to be too overpowerful we want there to be some tension so they're stuck in the middle of the storm and storm can't just wave her hand and make all the danger go away uh, but uh, a Japanese ship uh, picks up the X-Men uh, the captain uh, seems to be uh, more willing to uh, pick up these people in danger than uh, his I guess his second in command uh, his second in command says uh, should I remind you about our mission and the captain says, I don't care about the mission, we are going to save these people. Uh, and then they get on board and Cyclops says, I need to contact, and the captain says, I'm going to stop you right there. No, you're not contacting anyone. Uh, we are on a mission right now. Uh, you cannot uh, make any radio silence until we get to Japan. Uh, and that's the last we see of the X-Men in this issue. Uh, we cut back to uh, New York City. Uh, Jean uh, is once again leaving uh, the mansion, uh, even though it wasn't that long ago. It was an issue uh, where the X-Men were playing baseball and Warhawk attacked the school that Jean said uh, she was back to being an X-Men full time. Uh, now she says she has to leave because there's too many painful memories here. Uh, and so she leaves and then uh, Willandra brings uh, Charles some breakfast and then he says, uh, you know, uh, one time uh, I fought an evil mutant. I'm going to tell you a story about it. And so unprompted, uh, Charles uh, tells Lilandra about the time uh, he was uh, in a relationship with Moria, uh, and then he got drafted. Uh, then uh, while he was at war, uh, Moria sent him a letter saying that she was breaking up with him, wouldn't explain why. Uh, and then uh, Charles went to uh, Kyrnos, uh, the Greek island, uh, which is where he and Lilandra were a few issues ago. Uh, and uh, uh, he says something something about how he helped the people of Kyrnos with something and then they helped him in return. Uh, but then it just glosses right over that. And I have no idea if that's a reference to something because uh, up until now we haven't had a whole lot of uh, backstory on Charles. We know uh, that uh, his uh, stepbrother is Cain Marco, uh, the Juggernaut. That would have all been when he was a kid, uh, when his uh, father died. Uh, and then we know eventually he loses his legs, uh, or loses the use of his legs fighting the alien loot. Lucifer, uh, but that would have been a good little while after all of the flashback stuff we get in this issue. So I have no idea what Charles did for the people of Kyrnos. Uh, it's not uh, mentioned anywhere in this issue, and I cannot think of anything in previous issues uh, that this would be referring to. Uh, but after Kyrnos, uh, Charles goes to Cairo, uh, where uh, young Storm uh, pickpockets him, and then he's able to get his wallet back, but then uh, he is assaulted by a telepathic attack. And uh, this is is Amal uh, Farouk. Uh, Farouk. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I think in the Legion TV series they pronounced it Farouk, I think. Uh, but uh, he is another uh, telepath and he is evil. Uh, he basically is just a hedonist uh, indulging in uh, whatever fleshly desires he wants. Uh, and Charles pretty much instantly picks up that this guy is uh, pure evil. Uh, and this guy says, hey Charles, why don't you join me? We're both uh, mutants. We're both telepaths. And uh, Charles says, no, uh, I'm going to stop you for uh, whatever you've done uh, and so then they have a fight on the astral plane uh, it lasts for a little bit and then Charles uh, is able to uh, defeat uh, the uh, Shadow King, uh, as he is uh, later called. I don't think they call him the Shadow King in this issue. Uh, but uh, anyway, he's able to defeat him. Uh, and uh, interestingly, in years later, uh, they will kind of hint that the Shadow King is like ancient, like a couple of thousand years old. Uh, I remember in the very early 90s, this would have been just months before uh, Claremont left the X-Men books, uh, it was hinted that uh, the Shadow King was much older 
older uh, than he appears here. But this issue does not indicate that. Uh, this issue, uh, he doesn't act like he is some ancient evil. Uh, and if he was, he probably would have taken over more of the planet than a small part of Egypt. Uh, the Thieves' Quarter uh, is all that he's in charge of here. And so uh, I will say the retcon that he is uh, this, like, uh, thousands-year-old uh, evil mutant uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but uh, he uh, doesn't appear to be that old here anyway. But uh, Charles defeats him, and then uh, he uh, tells Lilandra uh, later on he went to Tibet, uh, Tibet where he uh, fought Lucifer and lost the use of his legs. Uh, at this point, uh, we still do not have uh, the idea that Charles uh, was friends with Magneto uh, at some point before he lost his legs. Uh, and that seems clear to me that even now, uh, at this point, uh, that Claremont and Byrne uh, did not have that in mind. Uh, that's a retcon that will come later, uh, and it seems like uh, Claremont was just kind of making stuff up as he went along. Obviously, he was, uh, and I don't mind that. Uh, the idea that uh, Charles and Magneto were friends, uh, I actually like that retcon. I've seen some people who say they don't like it, uh, that when you go back to the 1960s, it's clear that Magneto is just evil. Uh, yeah, and those comics weren't very good. Uh, I think that Magneto, having more of a sympathetic background and uh, being not as 100% evil as he was in the 60s, is more interesting than Bwahaha, I'm evil. Uh, but uh, that's pretty clearly not uh, in the minds of the people making the comics at this point. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, then uh, Lilandra says, you have nothing left for you on Earth, come back with me to space. And at first Charles says no, uh, and then he says, okay, yeah, I'll go with you into space. Uh, and then uh, Jean Grey uh, meets uh, Misty Knight uh, in an airport, and Misty says she has to go help Colleen Wing with something uh, in Japan. Uh, and then uh, Jean realizes she is completely alone, and she has nobody to help her. Uh, which is not true. You just left Charles uh, to uh, wallow in his own sorrow. Uh, you could have helped him through his grief, and he could have helped you you, but whatever. Uh, and so uh, Jean is terrified that she's now completely alone. Uh, I have no idea getting back to Misty Knight. Uh, I did read uh, the uh, Iron Fist epic collection uh, which was uh, the uh, Iron Fist series and then the various appearances before he had his own series and then I think two issues of Marvel Team Up. Uh, this is a good little ways after that. Uh, the Iron Fist Power Man series has already been going on. I know that Claremont wrote a little bit of that series uh, but I haven't read any of those issues so I have no idea if Jean and Misty are still roommates. Uh, Jean did go back to being a full-time X-Men, so it would make sense that she'd be living at the mansion once again. And uh, I know Misty was going undercover uh, for, like, months uh, towards the end of the Iron Fist series, so I don't know if she and Jean haven't seen each other in a long while. That's kind of how Misty is acting here. Uh, but uh, this is a situation where Claremont uh, likes to use characters that he has written before uh, in any way that he can, uh, and I think that's why he had Misty and Jean become roommates in the first place, but I don't think that they are roommates anymore, although I'm not sure. Maybe uh, in the Power Man and Iron Fist series, that's kind of uh, explained a little better. Uh, but that's about it for this issue. Uh, this was a fun issue. Uh, I like seeing Charles's backstory, uh, since we hadn't gotten to see a whole lot of that up until this moment. Uh, and uh, I think it's fine every once in a while uh, to kind of put the X-Men on the back burner and do something different. Uh, so I enjoyed this one. Uh, I hope you guys liked this video. Uh, so uh, that's all I have. So let's consider this issue examined.